tonight, folks, you'll notice the absence of our normal lead-in music. You'll also notice that we're not going into any type of a musical selection to introduce the subject matter of this program as we usually do, simply because I want to devote the maximum amount of time to our special guest tonight, Mr. Jordan Maxwell. Now, I never met Jordan Maxwell in my life until today. I don't really know him personally. I have uh, been introduced to him circuitously through a, a bevy of my own personal friends, whom after listening to my lectures, after reading my book, realized that Mr. Jordan Maxwell and I have quite a bit in common. And they prompted me, pushed me, you might say, to meet with this gentleman. And I guess that uh, you had the same treatment on your end, didn't I you, Jordan? I certainly did, yes. Jordan has a fascinating background. He has paralleled my research in many uh, avenues, in many areas, and has come up with the same conclusions, the same results, the same answers to the questions that I have asked all my life. And tonight we're going to be talking about the answers that he has come up with. But first I'm going to ask him to introduce himself to our listening audience. Jordan? Well, thank you very much for asking me to be here. My name is Jordan Maxwell, as we said. Uh, I, as of 1959, I became very interested in the subject of secret societies and subversive movements. Uh, I came about it because of my family. <clears throat> when I was very small, my mother's uncle worked in the Vatican Secretary of State's office as a civilian. And on, on occasions when he would come back to uh, home to visit, back to this country, he would sit and talk for hours about the intrigue going on throughout the world behind the scenes of religion and politics and all the nefarious plans that are being uh, fomented by governments and religion. And I became fascinated with this subject. Uh, since then, I have, um, <clears throat> as I said, since 1959, I have really... Uh, delve into the subject myself and uh, and I find the more that you find out about the subject the more you know how much you don't know because it is an enormous a subject that takes in not only the fraternal orders the secret societies of Freemasonry uh, the occult societies going back into the most ancient world going back to pre-Sumerian uh, and those symbols and emblems which were used in the ancient world are now even being used in our world, our modern day world, and we don't even realize it. As a matter of fact, uh, things like the uh, oil companies, the automotive uh, companies, the cigarette companies use symbols and emblems and of course in government, national institutions, educational institutions, our world is filled with symbols. And symbols are like the uh, letters of the alphabet. If you put enough of them together, they spell a word. And you put a lot of them together, and they tell you a story. The story I am talking about is the secret societies and occult orders that go all the way back into the ancient world. And I believe, and it's my opinion, that they are still in operation today behind our major religions and major governmental agencies. The symbols and emblems you can see with your own eyes and do some research, and you'll find that they go back into the ancient world. Uh, now, we like to talk about the, the, that there's a separation of church and state in America. The fact of the matter is no such uh, separation exists. Uh, there is a very direct connection between the religious establishment in this country and the political establishment. And as you probably well know, has always been the case, all the way back to the pre-Sumerians. The, the king was always the mediator between God and man, as well as being head of the temple state. Uh, the pharaohs, of course, of Egypt perfected this so that they were both gods and, uh, and mortals who were ruling the state. The Caesars picked up on this, of course, and it's come down through the uh, ages. And uh, even in our country of America today, we have a direct connection between church and state. And let me draw your attention to this and uh, make you an example here. Uh, the churches, when you go into most churches, you will find that there are like three tiers high, and then the altar sits on the top tier. Uh, the same is true in a courtroom. You go in into a courtroom and you'll see that the, uh, that the bench sits on three tiers high and the three tiers high has been traced in the reference works of Freemasonry to the first three degrees of Freemasonry. That's correct. Yes. And uh, so then you have the priest who comes out, the clergy who comes out with the long robe and incidentally the reason why clergy always wear long robes is because it's a female garment and it represents the feminine connection with God and that's why clergy wear a long robe. 
Uh, it also has to do with uh, when the clergy wear the long robe, the, uh, the judge, when the judge comes out, he wears the same long black robe. It's the same black robe that you wear when you graduate from university or high school. The black robe is a very important symbol. It has to do with a very ancient cult called the Saturnalian cult, going back into the ancient Semitic world, the worship of Saturn. Black was a color attributed to Saturn, and even today in Islam, in Mecca, uh, in Saudi Arabia, you have this square of Mecca within the magic circle, or within the Masonic circle, and Mecca is black, and it's draped in a black robe. And so it, this is a, a, world, uh, a world fraternity of secret societies that use the same symbols. But let me get back to the government, uh, the courtroom, and the, and the church. Uh, when, you, when, you, uh, when you're sitting at a church, you, of course, are looking up onto the altar, and you're looking, the priest is looking down on you. Uh, there is always a, a, a fence in the church, and then there's a gate, and only the priest can go through the gate to enter the altar. Um, the same thing is true in a court. Uh, there, is the, uh, there is the fence and there is the gate and only the attorneys can go through and they're called the Logos and they go through and talk to the judge for you. And of course the judge is sitting three tiers high so he can look down on you and you look up to him. Uh, the same uh, symbols which are used in religion are used in political circles. And I am saying, it's my opinion, that what we have in America is a religio-political-economic scheme based on a very ancient secret societies and fraternal orders. And until such time as we understand that concept, that things just don't happen. I mean, what was it? Franklin Roosevelt even said, anything that happens in politics, it was planned that way. And until such time as you understand that things are planned in politics, and that there is a rhyme and a reason to things, you know, we're never going to get to the bottom of this. A classic example of what I'm talking about is we here in this country, we hear politicians, the president and the, and the local leaders saying that they just see, they can't seem to get a handle on the crime problem, the drug problem, all of the different problems that are facing us as a people, and they just can't seem to get a handle on these things. However, if you don't, if you put a wrong comma on your on your income tax, they can get a hold on you. And if you go, yeah, and if you go into the Amazon jungles, they'll follow follow you, and they will find you. And it may take a while, but they'll spend millions, and they will find you, and they will bring you back here, and they will deal with you in public to show the rest of the people that you can mess around with other people, but you don't mess with the money and the government. Okay. So the, uh, the point I'm making is that if they cannot seem to get a hold on crime, but they can get a hold on you, the question should be asked, how is it that a country 50 years ago, which was a lot less sophisticated, got a hold on Adolf Hitler, and he had a standing army all over the world? They can get a hold on the, on the Soviet national economy and destroy uh, peoples and nations all around the world. They can get a hold on anybody they want, except for the drug trade, except for the crime. And I'm saying that the crime and the drug trade in this country are purposely allowed to exist and in certain cases even promoted. Because according to the ancient uh, cults of the ancient world, there was a term that has come down to us and, is, and many Freemasons in the audience will, re will, will readily uh, remember this. According to the ancient cults, there was something called ordo ab chaos in Latin, which meant order out of chaos. Right. So the idea was that if you can create enough chaos, that the people will be sufficiently frightened and will give to you the power and the, and the, and the uh, political power to bring back law and order. Now, there was a television comedy program many years ago called Get Smart. And when people tell you to get smart, it's implying that you, you're missing something here. All right? Get Smart. Uh, remember, you'll remember that on one side, in the, in the TV show Get Smart, on one side was chaos, and the other side was control. And uh, I'm saying that's exactly how you get control, by causing chaos. The idea is that if you're going to, if you're going to pull a scam on somebody, you're going to pick somebody's pocket or something, you always uh, have a diversion. You do something to draw the person's attention while you're picking his pocket. If you're going to break out of a prison, you always have the, the, the gang fight down at the far end while the guys are crawling out the, the hole on the other end. The idea is you set up a diversion, you cause chaos, and out of that you can get control. Because people will sufficiently frighten people will give you the power 
uh, to put down these, uh, you know, these problems. Now, Adolf Hitler did this, and he worked it perfectly, and it works. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, why is it that the German people would have ever allowed Hitler to do what he did? Hitler was elected to office because of the chaos that he was doing. He was causing the chaos. The people came sufficiently frightened, and so they had given him the political power to put down the trouble because they knew he was the only guy that could put down the problems because he was the one that was causing it. So I'm saying that the same kind of scam is being worked in this country today. We're seeing nothing but chaos and nothing but trouble, and I'm saying that it's all orchestrated, that, that, that you cannot, you couldn't possibly imagine people like the President of the United States making mistakes. I mean, you, you hear every day, what, Senator so-and-so made a terrible mistake, or the United States government made a terrible mistake in Vietnam, or they made a horrible mistake on this or that. This country don't make mistakes. If they do something, they have a reason for doing it. They don't pay these people, these doctors and professional psychologists and this, this whole army of brains at the Vatican. I mean, at, well, that's a Freudian slip probably at the <laughs> Vatican too. But at the, uh, at the um, what is it, the um, Pentagon. Pentagon. Yeah, they don't pay these people big money to make mistakes. The president, when he does something or this government does something, they know what they're doing. Now, it may not make any sense to you, but according to other plans, if you understand what's going on behind the scenes, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, well, well, we let me interject something in here for you, uh, Jordan, so that yeah. you'll understand. My listening audience has had 22 hours already. Their education is is far beyond. Uh, anybody that 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 you right. normally talk to, right, right, they understand what we're talking about. They understand the involvement of the Vatican. They understand the symbology of the mystery schools. Right. Now we may have some listening uh, audience out there who just tuned into this show, or maybe just found it a couple of shows ago. But most of my listening audience worldwide have been mm -hmm. listening to this show since the fourth of May, 1992, and have an extensive education in all of this. So uh, if you want to cut to the meat of the matter, these people will understand. You don't have okay. to build up to it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean. I, I I talk to audiences so often, and, and I'm all, and I'm aware that when I'm talking to an audience, that people generally have not been initiated into this kind of thinking, and so that's why I try and lay a foundation for. Uh, there are a lot of occult symbols and emblems in government and and religion, and I wanted to get into one in particular. Um, the, the Nazis, the communists, the fascists, and all of the ancient um, world powers that have ever existed have used one common symbol continually, and that's the sun. Now, if you understand that the earliest uh, history, the prehistory of the human race, goes back into the most ancient times, and God knows how far back that would be, 10, 20,000, maybe 50,000 years, I don't know. But if you go back to the earliest times of the human race, you can appreciate that the world was a very different place than what we live in today, okay? And so, if you understand that it was a very cold and very fearful world at night, okay? And, and if you understand also that in that cold and fearful world when the sun went down, there was a lot of fear for, for your life, there were a lot of predatory animals, and so the coming of the sun the next morning was always something to look forward to that brought warmth, that brought light, and brought uh, security. And around that concept grew a whole religio-political philosophy of the coming of the sun, God's sun, the light of the world. And, and it has been used by the ancient Egyptians, all the mystery schools, and of course you probably know it was uh, referred to as Baal, a worship at one time. Baal was the sun, God's sun the light of the world, and, uh, you know, the, the whole concept in the ancient world was that um, he had 12 helpers, which were the 12 signs of the zodiac of the 12 months of the year, and, of course, they, uh, they and, and he died, of course, with the crown of thorns, like the Statue of Liberty has the crown of thorns, it's the, it's the corona, or the sun rays, and uh, when we begin to see all of these connections, and, of course, in the spring of the year, uh, the sun, which had died in winter, had passed over from the death of winter into the new life of spring. So the, in, the, in the old Semitic world, they celebrated the Passover. And we even say that today when someone dies, they passed on or they passed away or they passed over. Yeah. And so we get the, uh, the, the old symbolism out of Egypt of the sun dying in the winter and passing over to the new life in spring. And so the, in the, the beginning of spring, we had the Passover. Uh, is an interesting thing too about the sun. 
is that the ancient world realized that on the December 22nd, which was the winter solstice, they noticed something interesting on the sundials. And of course, the sundials were being round, they could each degree for each day. They noticed that on the 22nd, the sun did not move. On the 22nd, it stayed on the, on the sundial on the same degree. On the 23rd, it stayed on the same degree. It didn't move any further south, and it didn't start back north. On the 24th, it was still in the same degree on the sundial. It didn't move. So they said, the ancient Egyptians said, anything that was moving and is now not moving is dead. So therefore, they said God's son died and was in his tomb or dead for three days. Then on December 25th, anything that was dead and in his grave and not moving for three days and now begins to move back to the northern hemisphere, it moved its first degree. So on December 25th, they said God's son is born on December 25th. Now, in the real world, let's clarify something for a lot of people who are listening out there. You're not talking anything about Christmas. You're not talking about what Christians traditionally uh, recognize as no, now I'm getting as into the symbol of Christ. You're right. getting, I'm into, getting the into symbolism, symbolism. Right. of the ancient religion of the sun, right. which was later perverted in Christianity to reflect this in order to capture the pagan worshippers into the Christian church. Absolutely, okay. right. Now, what I'm saying is that... Because December the 25th is not Christ's birthday. No, not at all. No, it's the birthday okay. of the sun. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, but then when you understand that this symbolism began to be, uh, uh, the, the ancient peoples understood that the sun was uh, revolved and it was a symbol of revolution. And today in America we have, or at least in the western part of the United States, we have an oil company called Union Oil. Union Oil has as a symbol a round orange globe with the 76, and of course the commercial says, get the spirit, the spirit of 76. The orange globe is a sun because the communists have always used the rising sun you know, as you, if you recall, on the Soviet National Coat of Arms, certain is the rising sun that's bringing the dawn of a new day. And the symbology of 76 plugs it into the colony. 76 and the, uh, and the 1376 is 13. Right, and the order of the trapezoid. And if you figure out the, the formula of the ancient uh, religion, which says, as above, so below, the yes. creation of this country in 1776 was guaranteed to bring into the world the new man, the illumined man, who of right. 6x or 666. Right. And, and 8 is the number in the old Kabbalistic uh, Freemasonry in, in Europe. 8 was the number of new beginnings. And the new beginnings, <clears throat> the new beginnings was uh, 17, is 7 and 1, 8. And 13 was, of course, the old uh, mystic number of God and his 12 helpers, of God and his 12 months make 13. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, it's also the number of death and rebirth, or absolutely. resurrection, or right. reincarnation, depending upon how sure. you look at that. But. So once you get into all of the symbolism, you see that there is a rhyme and a reason to all of these emblems and symbols. And something else in relation to word symbols, and God knows we're just we're inundated by innuendos and catchphrases in this country especially. Um, <clears throat> we, we've been hearing since uh, George Bush made it, made it publicly known something called the New World Order. I want to clarify something for your audience. They probably might already know this, but uh, Europe has been referred to as the Old World, and anything coming out of Europe is Old World, all right? Uh, Vatican, the Vatican has dominated Europe for about 1,500, 1,600 years, the Vatican has dominated Europe. Europe has dominated the world. There was a religio, political, economic uh, scheme of things. That was the order of the day. The old banking houses of the Roman Empire, the old, uh, what was some of the families, uh, Anarius, Copernicus, Pisos. The Pisos family were a very powerful banking family who were the of the main brains behind, they were the Rockefellers of the Roman Empire. The Medici's. <laughs> the the Medici's, absolutely. And uh, so when you understand that there was a banking, fraternal, religio, political order that operated throughout the world, and the Vatican sat on top of that, and that was an old world order. Now with the coming of America, of course America is referred to as the new world, and so what we have now is a new world order. And that New World Order implies that there is a fraternal order operating throughout the world, operating out of America, <clears throat> that seeks to, <clears throat> excuse me, ex it seeks to take the place of the old world order and bring a new order of the world. But you must understand that you cannot have a new order or a new building on the same site as an old building. So you've got to get rid of the old order first and bring in the new order. Uh, <clears throat> when you get into that, and I'm sorry, I'm 
<clears throat> got a frog in my throat. That's okay. When you get into that, you get into the symbolism that uh, Steven Spielberg and Lucas and George Lucas bring out about uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And, of course, you can't understand the Last Crusade if you don't understand the First Crusade, right? <laughs> or the Next Crusade. Or the Next Crusade, which is the real crusade, right? And then uh, from there, you get um, the, uh, the trilogy of Star Wars and then the mm -hmm. Empire Strikes Back. And, of course, New York is referred to as the Empire State. That's correct. All right? And so you get the Empire Strikes Back. And then, of course, in, uh, you might know this, that in Freemasonry, there is a little ideologue or a little genie-like uh, mystical character, supposedly in Freemasonry, that they said was their mediator between the gods and the Freemasons of the Knights Templars. And that little saint or that little, uh, um, what would I say, um, <clears throat> mediator uh, in the old Knights Templar tradition was a little short little monster with pointed ears and his name was Yoda. And you go into the uh, old Masonic literature and pictures and you'll see pictures of Yoda because he was a Jedi Knight. And if you understand the Jedi Knights where it was connected to the old order of the Knighthood of the Knights Templars, so what we're talking about here is the Star Wars. We're talking about a spiritual war in the heavens, so to speak. Well, this, uh, was, this was a, a cosmology, a celestial uh, religion, so to speak. Absolutely. They and talked about moving on to the celestial sphere right? Uh, when they discussed and I think <laughs> that right, and then of course the sun was well. The uh, ancient Egyptians said that the sun walked across the sky, so therefore right. we have Luke Skywalker, and, you know, and then you have this, and <laughs> a thousand points of light, That's a thousand things. points of light, and a thousand year reign of the Nazi Empire or whatever. Right. And what we're talking about here is secret societies and their use of symbols and emblems in religion and politics and philosophy and uh, incidentally when you go to when you graduate from university I meant to bring this out when you graduate from university you wear a long black robe the black robe is of course the same black robe that the priest wears mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's the same black robe that the judge wears all right because the black robe symbolized the uh, it goes back to the old Saturnalian cult which was pre um, Egyptian <clears throat> the worship of Saturn and according to that ancient uh, Semitic cult, when you got married, you wear the ring. The ring was the ring of Saturn. The women would show their submission to that god by wearing the ear ring. That's where we get the idea of the king being crowned. He wears the round crown or the round circle of the god of Saturn. Saturn, is the, as I said, was, uh, was assigned the color black, and therefore the black robe is the, is the uh, worship of Saturn, the Saturn alien god. Um, what was I going to say about, oh yes, and when you graduate, you graduate with the uh, square martyr board. The square martyr board is always the symbol of uh, the, the brick masons use the martyr board. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, of course, when you graduate, you are, referred to, you are referred to as an alumni, which comes from the word illumini. You have been illuminated, which basically means you, you now know what to kiss and when, and how to think and what to think and, and, what, and how to act. And you have been properly educated. You belong to the priesthood. That's right. You so belong to the priesthood. And if you go along to get along and uh, and don't cause any problems, then you go can... Go along to get along, you might get a little, right? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody else gets anything. And my point is, and I, have, and I have said this to so many audiences, that there is... This country, the United States, has no real enemies in the world. After the Second World War, especially, is that true? Well, every every enemy, even before the Second World well, War, the enemies that we had have been the one creation. That, that's uh, right. We country. created them. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, there is one. There is one legitimate, uh, believable enemy that faces America. That the that the powers behind the throne in this country in America are truly afraid of, and this is legitimate. They are totally frightened to death of us, the people, because they realize that the people ever wake up. I mean, something that Joe Kennedy was quoted as saying, something to the effect of uh, beware the American conscience, because if they ever wake up and find out what we're doing, it's going to be a hard, you know, hell to play. And so I believe that there is a legitimate enemy that this country perceives, and that's us. People who think too much, people who read too much, and people who talk too much. Well, that's always the case, though, Jordan, because we know that what's coming is going to be a socialist state. Oh, totally. Every time socialism has won anywhere, mm -hmm. the first thing that they've done is that they've they have literally 
uh, perverted the intelligentsia, mm -hmm. which has brought them to power. And then the first thing that they did is get rid of the get rid intelligentsia. Of them. They killed them. Absolutely. And the intelligentsia aren't very intelligent because they haven't learned this yet because they're still doing it. But uh, the more they change, the more they stay the same. That's right. We'll come back to that yeah. in just a few minutes. Folks, I hope you're paying attention to the show because uh, Jordan has an awful lot to say, and uh, you can hear that he's right in tune with what we've covered before. Don't go away. I'm saying our break. We'll be right back after this very short pause. Jordan, can we talk about some of the symbols, the symbology that people are going to run into in their everyday life uh, as they go about their business and maybe haven't even understood what these things mean? Can yes, you? as a matter of fact, <clears throat> as we were saying before, that the world around us is filled with emblems and symbols. And if you know how to read the symbols, you can tell where people are coming from. You can tell what organizations are coming from. Uh, for instance, uh, in Washington, D.C., which is a very interesting place, you have the uh, Washington Monument, which is, of course, the Egyptian obelisk. Now, the Egyptian obelisk is pointing, is, um, is of course, the male phallic symbol, okay? And the male phallic in the Washington Monument is connected to something in the, in the White House called the Oval Office. And when you understand the male phallic with the female oval office, you're talking about the, the, the coming of life, and that's the life of the nation. Um, you have the Pentagon. The United States Pentagon comes from the, from the uh, five-pointed pentagram. If you take the arms off of a five-pointed star, which has been used in devil worship and satanic worship for uh, thousands of years, if you... Uh, Understand, you take the arms off of a five-pointed star, the interior of the star is called a pentagon. And so we have the United States Pentagon, and of course the, uh, the pentagon is used by the Chrysler Corporation as their symbol, the pentagon. Why? Because Chrysler was the company that was chosen to uh, make the uh, military hardware for the United States, and they had the contract, so that's why they still use the pentagon as their symbol. And on the back of the dollar bill, of course, we don't want to forget that because uh, the dollar bill is crammed filled with uh, symbols. And uh, Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, said that the reason why it was uh, all these symbols were put on a one dollar bill is because he figured that all over the world, people, any, no matter how poor you were, you would have in your hand the, the, the almighty dollar. And if you have in your hand the one dollar bill, then you have in your hand all of the uh, all of the the symbolism of the secret societies and the occult orders. Uh, of course, on the left hand side of the back of the dollar bill, you have the pyramid. Now you've got to ask yourself, why would you have an Egyptian pyramid uh, on an American dollar bill? And then you will see the letters Anuit Coeptus over the top of the pyramid. Anuit Coeptus in Latin means our enterprise is now a success. Our God has favored our enterprise. The enterprise, of course, is on the banner beneath the pyramid, which is Novas Ordo Seclorum, which is the new order of the world, new order of Seclorum, and that's where we get the word secular, anything that's worldly. So now we're talking about a new world order on the bottom of the pyramid. You will we'll find that the pyramid has 13 layers, and there are 13 letters in Anuit Coeptus. And then if you go to the right side, you'll see the, uh, the, the seal of America with the eagle. And above the eagle, you'll have 13 stars, which stand for the 13 colonies originally. But the 13 colonies and the 13 stars go back to Jesus and the 12 because they are, they are moving in on and using the, uh, the ancient... Uh, societies are moving in on the teachings of Christianity imposing themselves under the 13 being Jesus and the chosen 12. Um, then you've got the, uh, the, the 13, let's see, on the, Amer on the right hand side, uh, you've got the, uh, on one side of the eagle you have the 13 leaves and the 13 berries and the 13 leaves, and then on the other side you have the 13 arrows. Everything is done in sequence of 13. Uh, of course, on the, um, the, the something else I wanted to bring up while I'm thinking about it is that so much uh, of what we have seen in movies and television are symbols. Are you aware that um, that I have been talking to some doctors in Los Angeles who have been doing some research on this, and I find it to be absolutely fascinating that 
many of the gangs, the uh, Latino and the black gangs in the major cities across America, their graffiti that they are spraying on uh, buildings, their graffiti are actually Masonic emblems and Masonic seals and symbols. And I have seen a whole collection that these doctors, and these are medical doctors, but they are interested in this subject. And they have been collecting hundreds of pictures of uh, graffiti and showing the research into the ancient secret societies. And there's no way that these black and Latino gangs could know these symbols. There, the, there's definitely a connection between the gangs and some sort of a higher orchestrated mind behind the warfare going on between gangs. I don't think those gangs are by chance. I think that they have been nurtured and orchestrated and, and promoted and even financed. I mean, if you think about it, how, how uh, those gangs have money to travel around. They can buy guns. They can they can roam around. They don't have to work. Where are they getting their money from? Well, not only that, but their main occupation is is the uh, narcotics business of and course. and fomenting uh, chaos, confusion, and fear. Right. And uh, they haven't they haven't got the background of understanding learning. Uh, uh, to put together the kind of logistics network that it would take to supply this kind of an enterprise. Absolutely. So someone with an awful lot of money, an awful lot of organization, an absolute ability to provide 100% protection is supplying these city gangs. This is not the mafia. You can bet on it. You can bet <laughs> this is a very sophisticated, uh, a totally protected organization. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the San Francisco Chronicle had a, two full pages in one of their newspapers I still have where they were talking about how the uh, this federal government was bringing in narcotics from Asia during the Vietnam War in the bodies of American servicemen that was being killed in Vietnam and they were bringing in bags of pure heroin and pure narcotics from Asia in the bodies of American servicemen and what were they doing with it? They were, they were giving it directly to the Mafia because the Mafia is doing uh, a little tricks for the government. It takes care of business for the government so they have to be paid. Well, let, let's clarify one thing here. It's not the government. It, no, is, it, is, it is the yep. secret societies who are operating behind our government. That's correct, exactly. and behind the, the veil of national mm -hmm. security. Yep. And uh, I, I might remind you that uh, back in history when Albert Pike and Giuseppe Mazzini were corresponding and were setting up the, the core uh, foundation of the Illuminati within Freemasonry, both in their respective countries, and at that time, of course, Albert Pike was the Grand Commander of Freemasonry throughout the world, and Giuseppe Mazzini was his counterpart mm -hmm. uh, on, in Europe on a lower level. It was Giuseppe Mazzini who created and fostered and gave the charter to the what is now known as the Mafia. That's right, because the Nostra was Mazzini. That's the correct. Masonic order. That no is doubt right. about it. And this explains the close cooperation between, between government and the Mafia. That is right. Absolutely. And uh, when we also understand that the old magic practicing priest, that the old Celtic Druid priest of ancient England, uh, in, the, in the person of, of Merlin the Magician, when you understand that the old priest, uh, the magicians, uh, worked their magic on people with their magic wands, and their magic wands were always made out of holly wood, and they're still working their magic today on, with Hollywood. If you understand how we are being manipulated, we're being uh, programmed, uh, Hollywood is nothing more than an instrument in the hands of the secret societies. And in Los Angeles, anyone who knows anything about the motion picture industry knows that the real bosses are in New York and back east. Uh, so nobody makes any decisions here in Los Angeles. Those decisions are made by some very powerful people behind the scenes in New York and upstate New York. And we're not talking about just Hollywood. We're talking about the media overall in general, right. including print, television, radio, right. uh, the whole works. That's and, uh, and, and, and specifically, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at is a very sophisticated uh, method of, of manipulation, manipulation and brainwashing. And exploitation. Correct. A absolute exploitation of people's ignorance somewhere along the line, and as I said to you before a few minutes ago, the greatest enemy this country will ever face, the people uh, who are behind the scenes of government in this country, their greatest enemy is you. 
you who think too much. As a matter of fact, there was a movie, there was a motion picture called, um, oh, what was it, a few years back called um, Network. And in the movie Network, at the end of the movie, the star uh, was a uh, newsman, and he said something to the effect that uh, you don't have to worry about America being destroyed. America's not going anywhere because we feed everybody. So if we go, the whole world goes because we're feeding everybody. But there is something that is lost forever. There is something that has gone and is legitimately lost, and that is your freedom as an individual human being to be free, to do your own thinking, to be your own person. That is lost. You have been taken over and you don't even know it. And he said, and the reason why is because you don't read, you don't think, you want to be entertained by Bugs Bunny and Big Top Pee Wee. You, you, all you want is your uh, recapable tires, like he says, and, and all of your creature comforts. And you don't want to put yourself out. And so consequently, uh, commas, the law of karma, uh, cause and effect. You have not defended your freedoms, you, and if you don't defend your freedoms, then you're right. Then you don't have, have any. That's correct. Now, let's go back to this symbology. We're talking about it on the back of the reverse seal of the United States of America. Right. We see at the top of this pyramid, which, by the way, does not have a capstone, we see an, an eye surrounded by yes. rays, right. and, and this this eye signifies, really, in the beginning, signified the sun. Yeah, of course. It, it, of course. And, and the, the god of the sun. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And we see that same symbol as the insignia for CBS. Mm -hmm. CBS. Oh, right. That's right. And we also see in the NBC peacock a tail, and each feather of the tail has an eye mm -hmm. on it. And we also see the symbol of one of the information computer networks, America Online, mm -hmm. is the pyramid with the, again, all seeing oh, yeah. eye. We see the symbol of Prodigy, which is another computer information service, right. which as as its symbol, the pentagram. And by the way, folks, there's been a lawsuit brought against Prodigy because it has been discovered that as you sign on to the Prodigy computer bullet board database system, built into the program that they send you so that you can sign on to the system and use it is a method whereby they actually read the information on your personal hard drive on your personal computer and I don't know where they go where that goes or what they do with it but there has been a lawsuit that's been brought against Prodigy uh, for, for they've been caught in the act is what yes. I'm trying to tell you yeah, right. and it's in court right now uh, we'll let you know how that's resolved and what what happens but I will tell you if you're signing on to some of these uh, national uh, computer information database systems there's a good chance that uh, you're the one that's being you're the one that you're the one that uh, that is being uh, computerized uh, um, probed for information while you think that you're probing them right. for information it's actually the other way around and it's set up intentionally that way I had an interesting conversation with a very high-ranking rabbi in America <clears throat> about three or four years ago and he had written a book, and I was very interested in it, about symbolism or occult symbolism in America. And some of the interesting things he brought out was the movie Frankenstein. Uh, if you break the word down, Frankenstein, and it goes back to Jacob Frank. And Jacob Frank uh, in, the, in Europe was one of the leading members of the Illuminati in, in, in Europe. And uh, the idea was is that in the old movie, uh, Boris Koloff comes out and tells you in the <coughs> old original 1933 movie of Frankenstein, he comes out and says that this is a story about an old uh, mad scientist at, uh, at uh, Bavarian University of Ingolstadt. And he has put together all of these nefarious pieces and, and created a monster. And that's what Frankenstein meant. In, uh, and the rabbi was bringing out that all this story of Frankenstein was is that the Bavarian uh, um, professor, Adam Weishaupt, had put together a Frankenstein monster to frighten the world. And what he did is he used different people and put them together, the different pieces, into a monster. And so Hollywood has known these stories. Hollywood is totally aware of all of these symbolism that's, you know, that's, that's behind these stories. And so I'm saying there's no way we are going to remain a free people without facing the facts that it's an educated electorate. We, are, we love to go around talking about how we have the right to elect. Boy, in America, we have the right to elect. But we don't have the right to see elect. That's what the problem is. 
So without education, without knowledge and understanding, which comes from many hours of, of study and listening and understanding and researching on your own, uh, we're not going to remain a free people. And that's really the key, is not to believe anything that you hear from anyone, including no. me, including no, you, absolutely. including their own mother. Uh, people have got to learn to start digging up and, and researching and All studying. All on their own. Absolutely. And then you will make it your own. Then you will finally see how we have been had as a people. And believe me, we are in serious trouble because the... Uh, the, the, the secret societies, even the, the Masonic orders today, when I have asked these um, the Freemasons, who is it that is actually running your organization, they will tell you that they have a name for them. They call the Hidden Masters. The Hidden Supervisors. The Hidden Supervisors, the, the, the Hidden Masters. And it's always nine. Right, right. And that goes back to the legend of the beginning of the uh, Order right. of the Rose and Cross. And, right. And uh, Hiram Abiff and the... The, the whole works all the way back into into history um, that there is a round table of nine somewhere who is guiding all the machinations of the secret societies leading to a one world government. Now I don't know if these nine people really exist. It doesn't matter. It, what that's we do exactly know, right. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. <laughs> but what we do know is that it is organized, it is orchestrated, and there is a method to the madness. That's and it right. may not make any sense to you because that's you don't know what's going on. But if you were on the inner sanctums of these criminals as they're planning their criminology throughout the world and their bloodshed, if you were, if you were a fly on the wall meeting with these uh, criminals, then you would see that the things which are happening in the world make sense. That's correct. <clears throat> and also, one of the methods that they manipulate us is to turn us against each other. Absolutely. Racism is a form of this. Yes. Uh, getting different religions to fight against each other right. is a form of this. But that's a protection to them. As long as you're out fighting somebody else, you, you're not joining forces to uncover them. It's part of the uh, distraction, right. uh, the illusion, so that we're not looking in the right corner to see the cockroaches doing the real damage Absolutely. Uh, when they crawl out from under the sink at midnight. And that's a very good analogy, because that's just what they are the cockroaches. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, they have uh, they have symbolism in words, as I said, and I'm going to throw this one in, at you. In California, we have something called the criminal justice system. Think about it. It's a criminal justice system. And they know what they're doing. I mean, they have they have this thing back in Georgia called the, uh, uh, the what is it for, uh, disease control, the Center for Disease Control. It's not the Center for Disease Eradication. It's for the Center of Disease Control. The whole the way that we have grown up in this country, uh, accepting symbols, emblems, words, institutions, government symbols, we need to educate ourselves that there is a whole world of knowledge there that we have not been privy to know. Well, their concept of us, meaning the normal, everyday, and I, We're I consider myself to be in that category. Right. Uh, I'm just like everybody else out there. Probably if I had never been a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence, uh, I would uh, never have caught on to any of this and would not be doing what I'm doing right now. So I'm no different than the average listener out there. It's just that one day I woke up, looked myself in the mirror, and said, Bill, you've been stupid for all of your life. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not going to be stupid now. anymore. Right. Now I've got to do something smart. I've got right. to wise up. And that's, that's really the only thing that separates me from, from most other people. So, but their concept of us is that we're like animals, like cattle, that we don't have any intelligence. Precisely. That's why they, that's why they say that our offspring are kids. And we have kids. And they rub it in our, in our face. Absolutely. They rub our nose in it. And, and we go around saying that we have kids. Now, kids are, are, are baby goats. That's what they think of us. We're a bunch right. of goats, a bunch of animals. Uh, cattle. Cattle. And that we deserve. They figure we're going to get taken anyway because we're so stupid. Their idea is that... Since we're going to get taken anyway, they might as well do. They the might as well go on and do it because, right, because somebody's going to do it anyway. Absolutely. So, so uh, I'm saying I'm tired of being taken. Me too. And I want to wake the people up around the world to the fact that there's a there is a, a method there is a method to the madness. It is orchestrated, organized, directed, and financed by criminals. And until such time as you understand that, you're never going to see this world getting any better. And somebody has to take up the reins. Somebody has to do this. And we're putting our lives on the line by doing this. But at this point, I don't care anymore. All I want is to see this, this master conspiracy uncovered. I'd like to see all of this stuff uncovered for the first time 
And that's exactly what this, uh, the people behind our government do not want. They don't want the people to wake up. That's why they give you plenty of liquor stores, make sure you've got plenty of booze and plenty of alcohol and plenty of entertainment. And plenty of dope and plenty of football dope. games. Right. And, uh, all, this, is all the, this is all the concept of the, of the old Roman circus. That's it. When the emperor didn't want you to see what he was doing, uh, he would give you... Bread and circuses. Bread and circuses. In, entertainment. That's right. Wine and On your way out. So, uh, folks, I'm going to quote from Chapter 1 of my book, Behold a Pale Horse. I want you to uh, remember this because this is their philosophy. A nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. And such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. 